Welcome to the Game Rage Star Wars Podcast. Oh, yes. Here we are. Yep, that's right. Welcome back in to the Game Rage Star Wars Podcast. My name is Josh. I'm here today with uh, good buddy Adam. With yet another episode of Game Rage Star Wars. Indeed, and uh, we're probably going to go... <laughs> we're going to talk about the new guy who's going to supposed to be making the new Star Wars trilogy. And uh, just to give you a preview of how this episode is going to go, we're likely going to be going all Sith Lord up on their asses, potentially. I don't know. Anyways, before we get into it, though, let's talk about... Oh, shit. I didn't mean to click that. Uh, let's talk about uh, how you can help us out by going to YouTube, Game Rage Magazine... Subscribing there. We only need 18 more subscribers, you guys. Come on, buddy. Also, if you want to follow us on social media, you can follow us at Game Rage Magazine on Instagram and TikTok, at Game Rage Mag on Twitter slash X. You can follow Adam at All Gas No Trash Official on Instagram and go check out the All Gas No Trash podcast. And, uh, yeah, all right, so let's get into it. The new guy, Simon Kinberg. Kind of not has a good track record. No, it doesn't. Uh, he supposedly is uh, penned for writing, yeah, writing and producing a new trilogy with new characters. So, I mean, if they're gonna just, I, I don't want to say delete because you know they're not gonna delete main numbered Star Wars movies, but if they're just gonna like be like, okay, guys, let's just pretend maybe this didn't happen and let's just let's just continue on to something else. Um, or it's just far removed from. From that, it's like many, many years later. And now, having been exposed to the the miniseries of Darth Darth Vader's 2015, 2017, there are a ton of things that they can do. And not to say the Shorturan War within Darth Vader, the 2015 series, was my favorite thing, but that that is how you can make it work, right? That yeah. the most necessary resource within the galaxy is having or some type of metal for a you know a massive battleship in Star Wars like like a Death Star type of thing that this is critical to fucking make it that happen maybe you can make a whole war about that like or I, I don't know I think moving on beyond the force or making it Warring planets. Uh, I don't know. It, it could be. I don't know what they're planning to do, but the the door is open now. Now, now we know for a fact that we're mo- we're moving on be- beyond families and bloodlines. That's the shit I don't want anymore. Yeah, that's that's we need to go. In my opinion, we need to go so far away from that that it's not even fucking funny. And I. Listen, I kind of would have been cool with them doing that with with the whole, you know, the Ray thing. But then at the end of the goddamn thing, she just takes on the name Skywalker. So like, fuck off. We don't want it. We don't want any more Skywalker shit. I'm sorry. We're sick of it. We're sick of the continuation of the story. It's dead. Let's fucking move on to something different. Let's let's see something else. Uh, like you said, some sort of war for resources. I don't know. Um, maybe we don't need to have quote unquote Jedi and Sith but yeah we'll have some sort of force users that have lightsabers that can fight I still think they're fucking up by not going back to the old Republic era that that game that Star Wars the old Republic game had some of the greatest fucking Star Wars cinematics ever created in history of of combat with these major lightsaber battles you had all these fucking troopers fighting each other and shit man it was cool we need to do some shit like that. We need to go to some like major conflict that now enrages the galaxy. And to be perfectly honest with you, Yuzong Vong may be a fucking great way to do that. If if you know, uh, I know I shill for that all the time, but I think it's a great storyline. I think it's a great enemy to to fight. And granted, it may not have the same impact uh, as it did when uh, Luke was trying to fight them because they're immune to the Force. But it would still be fucking cool as shit, nonetheless. Especially now that we know we're not going to get that in canon because 
Luke Skywalker fucked off and became a hermit for fucking the rest of the time until he died. And he committed seppuku. Yeah, so we know we know we're never gonna get that. We're never gonna get that thing. We're never gonna get him him fighting the Yuuzhan Vong. So cool. Let's do something different with it. I don't know why they're so opposed to that. Hell, I mean, maybe we even do some kind of weird horror fucking thing with this new trilogy, and you make it like a fucking alien fucking suspense kind of thing, and like. I don't know, uh, like fucking Full Metal Jacket, or not Full Metal Jacket, but like uh, Apocalypse Now meets fucking like Alien or some shit. And you have this like sweet ass war movie. Uh, again, they did it with Rogue One. They made Rogue One like a straight war movie and there were no Force users or no Jedi involved until the end when Vader came in. And that was one of the greatest fucking Star Wars movies. That's like up there for sure. Like that's yeah. an excellent fucking movie. And they've shown us they can do it. They've shown us they can fucking do it if they want to, but for whatever fucking reason, they don't want to. Maybe this new guy will give us something fucking new. I swear to God, if he fucking comes at us with, oh, fucking Ray again, and hey guys, and this, and this, this continue this shitty story. Oh, nah, man, you fucked. Yeah, of course I'm gonna go watch it, because I'm a fucking mark for Star Wars. <laughs> and we need to be able to talk about it, so I can't, like, fucking not see it. I can't boycott it, but I'll sure be pissed off if that's what they do. Um, I wonder if there's certain things that have to exist in order for it to still be called Star Wars. Uh, if you need the force within Star Wars, maybe, or if you need lightsabers and all that shit, or can it still be? Star- well, uh, but then I, I proved my point wrong because, or you already said it before, Star Wars Rogue One exists, and that didn't have any force users with the exception of Vader at the end. It was just politics between the Rebel Alliance and the uh galactic empire and that was enough and yeah. it was enough for it to be a good movie exactly and i think that's what you need to do i think that's what they do for this and if they give us some fucking bullshit i'm gonna be mad i'm gonna be fucking pissed so uh, i guess we could look at this guy's uh oh yeah let's do that let's pull it up real quick. His, his, his past record simon kinberg has done uh, okay, he wrote his, his writing, his first writing deal, Triple X, State of the Union, all right, uh, which was the uh, sequel to Triple X. Uh, I don't think, I think Ice Cube was in this one. State of the Union? Yeah, it was Triple uh, X, State of the Union. I think this is the one with Ice Cube. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ice Cube, Willem Dafoe, yeah, Scott's, but yeah, this was, this was fucking Ice Cube. Um, but you know, I will. I listen. I enjoyed those movies. They're those shitty, campy, fucking action movies, and uh, whatever. I enjoyed it. Uh, he also wrote Mr. and Mrs. Smith, which was that action comedy movie with uh, Angelina Jolie and uh, Brad Pitt, where they uh, met and fucked and betrayed Jennifer Aniston. So, I mean, he's he's responsible for that technically. So, <laughs> uh, if you're a Friends fan, you might not like this. Uh, he also wrote X Men: Last Stand, which was the third X Men movie in the, the original worst. shitty trilogy. That, and the worst of the bunch. The worst of the bunch, according to Adam. Um, additionally, he see he also wrote Jumper, which this was the one that was starring Hayden Christensen and I think like Samuel L. Jackson, and they've got this like they can like teleport themselves. Yeah, like, I remember that. I, I thought that was a fucking good movie. Um, I don't think I've. Uh, seen it since 2008 but um i might have to watch it again just to just to get caught up on it and there was another movie that came out sometime afterwards that was kind of like the same thing somewhat but that one was time traveling it was called looper looper oh yeah that's right that was with bruce willis and uh what's his name uh joseph gordon levitt yeah and he goes back and it's it goes back in time and it's fucking him or whatever yeah but i'm like what what weird timing for two movies one called jumper the other one called looper Looper. Yeah. yeah that's crazy uh, and then also we had in 2009, he wrote the the reboot, the new Sherlock Holmes with starring Robert Downey Jr., um, which, I mean, I didn't think that was a bad movie. I, uh, I never saw it. It was, it was your typical, like, kind of summer blockbuster kind of action kind of comedy-ish type movie. Um, he wrote This Means War, which I don't think I saw this one. This was... Uh, Reese Witherspoon, Chris Pine, Tom Hardy, they were like CIA agents who were like trying to date the same lady or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> you skipped over X-Men First Class. That's a good He didn't movie. write it though. What did he do? He Executive just produced movie? it, like, oh, okay. which means right. nothing. So yeah. 
Uh, that's why I don't. I'm, I'm only saying the ones that he's actually written and oh, or written, directed. Okay. All right. Um, he uh, producing. I don't really count that as anything because you're not really influencing anything. I don't feel like as as a I producer. still don't know what a pro- producer does. All right. Let, let's just let's just Google it real quick. What does a movie producer do? I feel like they just throw <laughs> money at the problem. <laughs> it says they manage the production process of the movie. So. Finding the material, hiring, financing, scheduling, and budgeting, logistics, marketing, and distribution. So they do like all the other. It's all the backside shit. So it's nothing creatively to do with the thing. Um, I would I would say. And how how I never understood that how when you know when they try to sell you a movie, it'll say from the executive producers yeah, Will Smith. that brought you Deadpool. Right. That does not encourage me more to watch the movie. No, because those guys actually had nothing to do with the making of the movie. They just facilitated it. Uh, but again, it's people who have a name. It's like, it, that's what Hollywood is. It's, it's smoke and mirrors. So they're getting you to say, oh, from the guys who brought you Deadpool, even though this movie has nothing to do with fucking Deadpool or nothing to do with anything like Deadpool, it may be a fucking romantic comedy. From the guys who brought you Deadpool, maybe that'll make some guys that don't like romantic comedies want to go see this movie. But... It's cheap marketing tricks. Yeah, because that uh, Francis Ford Coppola movie that bombed, uh-huh. uh, The Architect or whatever oh, the fuck it was called, Yeah, uh, they did the exact same thing <laughs> where they brought up all the other movies that Francis Ford Coppola had. <laughs> like, hey, do you remember Francis Ford Coppola for The Godfather yeah. and all this other bullshit? Well, you can expect this movie to m- marginally be the same or maybe worse, but it doesn't really matter because you like Francis Ford Coppola, right? Yeah, so come see his movie, guys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so he did write X-Men Days of Future Past. Bitchin' movie. I, I, yeah, I thought that one was a good one. I, I enjoyed that one myself. Yeah. He, he wrote that one. Uh, he, he wrote the newest Fantastic Four series from 2015. Bombed. Yeah, that one didn't do so good. Um. He wrote then X-Men Apocalypse, which, listen, the only reason I actually enjoyed this movie is because Olivia Munn is in it, and I'm a fucking Olivia Munn mark, so uh, I, that, I this movie was 10 out of 10 just because she was <laughs> I, I don't give a fuck. I'm sorry. I'm just, being, I'm just being fucking honest, all right? Like, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if this and movie was... And she also played, like, Psylocke, which is fucking sweet. Yeah, and so I don't know if this movie was good or bad. I, I only know that... I never saw it, so oh, I wouldn't yeah, know. I only know that, that was she was in it, and it was fucking amazing. I know if that one was not a... <clears throat> One that many people enjoyed. Yeah, uh, he wrote the 2019 Dark Phoenix, which was the one starring uh, the the chick from Game of Thrones. Also shat on. Shat on quite a, quite a bit. Uh, and then he wrote something in 2022, wrote and directed it. Uh, this was his directorial debut of some show called The 355, uh, which was a spy thriller. And it's 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 got a bunch of fucking women in it that are very famous: Jessica Chastain, Penelope Cruz, oh, Fan yeah, I remember Bing, that. Diane Kruger. I, I don't think I actually saw this. No, I remember seeing the advertisements for it though. Is this like a spy movie? We should maybe we should watch this from movies and TV. This might you know give us a. I I don't, I don't know. I mean, I just know that it was you know women. It was an, a women's. It was like female Ghostbusters, and I don't know how well it was received, but yeah. Well, maybe we'll have to watch this one. But anyways, this the, the next thing that he most recently wrote is called The Killer's Game, which is an action comedy film that... I don't know if this is going to directly go to Netflix. Uh, oh, fuck, it came out in... Wow, I guess this just came out. It was released on September 13th, 2024. It received negative reviews and was a box office bomb. Oh, oh God. Oh, I mean, no. you can tell from the... the that cover, man. That looks like trailer. Ass. Look at Dave Bautista's haircut. That looks terrible. Damn. That's terrible, man. Uh, essentially... This is not. This is not looking good, man. A rip, uh, a rare Batista fucking L as far as movies go. Oh, wait a minute. This has him listed as the writer on this, right? He write wrote the Killer's Game. Mm. Okay, but then on the Killer's Game thing, it says something else. It said someone else. It says screenplay was by Rand Ravitch and James Coyne. His name's not even fucking on here, man. What's up with that? Like, what? I don't know. Uh, this is terrible. Um. um <sighs> anyway, so those those are the shits, man. It, it its budget was this movie's budget was thirty million dollars. It only made five point nine million dollars. That, that's that's horrific, man. Who made this? The production company was Mad Chance Productions and Endurance Media. They're out of business. They're, yeah, <laughs> they're folding. They're done. <laughs> that sucks, man. That's they're fucked. 
They are screwed. All right. So writing credits uh, doesn't look promising already. No. Already doesn't look promising. Um, he did also, supposedly he was a writer, executive producer, and a creator on Star Wars Rebels, although I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I guess he's listed in here with Dave Filoni and Carrie Beck as uh, the, one of the creators of Rebels, which, listen, Rebels was amazing. I, not probably because of this guy, but just because of Filoni. That's why Rebels was fucking awesome. Yeah, which is weird, because if they already have people that they know have worked with Star Wars and things have worked in the past, why didn't they just go with those people that were the most attributed for the success of Star Wars being involved with Disney, like uh, you know John Favreau or whatever, with The Mandalorian and all that yeah, jazz? Yeah, I don't... I don't know what, I mean, maybe it's because they're fucking, like, busy. Maybe Filoni's just so busy with all this other shit that's going on. Um, I mean, writer, director, executive producer, I mean, he's got, I mean, he was doing Skeleton Crew. He was an executive producer on that, and he was also, he This wrote, dude. Yeah, no, Dave Filoni. Okay. He also obviously is doing the Mandalorian, the Mandalorian and Grogu, which is a full length feature film that they're doing to final to finish off the Mandalorian shit, the Mandalorian verse or whatever supposedly. So, uh, but that's not coming out even until twenty twenty six. So, I mean, he's busy doing that shit. I guess if they want to get shit going with that, I mean, Tales of the Empire, huh? Um. Episodic directing, yeah, he did a lot of shit on that. I mean, yeah, Dave Filoni fucking does some shit. I mean, he knows what's up. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why you wouldn't go with this guy to, to fucking do it. He's immersed in the lore. Uh, this guy, Simon Kinberg, hasn't done anything for Star Wars uh, at all, other than Rebels. I mean, he was he did Rebels, so uh, I don't know what level of involvement or dedication he has to the lore. And that See, that's one of the things of... It's why Star Wars was so awesome when Lucas was in charge, because obviously this was his creation. He was fucking dedicated to the lore. I mean, he was dedicated to it, man. He was this was his life. And then when you sell it to these assholes and now we get these things where you got people that like, oh, cool, we need to make money. But you get people. And I think that was a lot of their issue at the beginning with this this new trilogy was that they didn't have people involved that really respected the lore or cared about the lore and wanted to just like insert their own things into it. So if you get once they once they brought in Dave Filoni to do fucking Rebels and they brought him in to do fucking Mandalorian, your most successful things that you've had in Star Wars since you bought it Disney have been created by people who were immersed and loved the lore, right? Like people who respected the lore. All the shit that you've done that's been sort of like eh, shitty to the lore goes out the fucking window. It get nobody likes it. So like maybe learn from those mistakes. You know what I'm saying? I feel like if there were any type of people that should be writing uh, a new type of Star Wars, or if there is going to be a new trilogy, it'd have to be like a tandem between uh, people that write the comics. Whoever the fuck that might be, plus one other person that is known for writing movies. So you find like yeah. the medium between the two. You gotta have I think you're right. I think you I think you make it like a five person team. You got two guys that fucking write from comics, mm -hmm. two guys that write scripts, and then Dave Filoni being the fifth guy. To be in like one person that's like for lore. Yeah. Like that's for like, hey. This is what we need to get on. We need to stay on track with whatever we're doing. And I think that's how you fucking get shit done. I mean... Yeah, why... Why? I mean... Obviously, having multiple people means the cost of making the movie is going to go up, right? True. But if it's going to be a success, you better make sure it's going to be a fucking success. So why not go all in on getting a full writing team to start off and get it right and then have Dave Filoni be the end all be all so to speak within that team to say I know you're just I know if you have the two other movie script writers say they want to do things and he's like oh I don't know about that it feels like you guys are money grabbing right now yeah if we're going to be throwing like throwing in your ideas this isn't loyal to what we think Star Wars could be I don't like it yeah I think you just let some fans do it some fans I think you just let some fans do it and you let Dave Filoni like supervise 
uh, really, I think you just let me, you, Frank, and we have Ed come on board, and then Dave Filoni's in charge of us, and then we just fucking come up with the next trilogy. Or, shit, man, why not go back to how Star Wars started and just have people take chances on somebody? I don't know how the fuck you would find somebody, but for Luke Skywalker, uh, for Mark Hamill and and uh, Harrison Ford yeah, and Carrie Fisher, even for for those guys taking a chance for their with their, it wasn't really a a chance or, or a risk <laughs> because I mean they were, I mean, as a new actor, you do whatever you can to get yeah to get to out get, there to end up wherever you're at. I feel like they should take the same mentality and be like, you know what. Let's fucking take a chance on new people all together. Now, even new been, actors. Yeah, haven't been in shit. Let's yeah. do that. Let's yeah. go that route, man. Just to surprise people and see, <clears throat> let's get people interested in Star Wars again and not just have it be, let's get Samuel. That's that. I feel like that was one of the mistakes. I mean, I don't know how people feel about Samuel Jackson in Star Wars, but... <laughs> I wish they would have let him say motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but... That's not what you want to see in a Star Wars movie. You yeah. want to see awesome characters played by people that bring out the best in those characters and not vice versa. Samuel Jackson playing Samuel Jackson yeah, in, as in Star Jedi. Wars. Yeah, Samuel L. Jackson with a lightsaber. Yeah, That's one mistake they can't make in the future. They can't have Jake Gyllenhaal being a fucking <laughs> Jedi. Nah. I'm, I'm not to say that you know Jake Gyllenhaal is a bad actor. I think he's fucking great. But I don't need the namesake... Jake Gyllenhaal to sell a movie. Star Wars is officially at that point where it doesn't matter who is the actor and not to discredit the actors themselves, but the brand is so strong that people are just going to buy the shit regardless. Yeah. So why not take a chance on people that really want to be on these projects, whether that's the writers or the actors and just fucking make it happen, man. I mean, it's not really a risk, but why not go big and bold and why not yeah, get agree. back to the like grassroots of what get back to the roots of like how Star Wars even started. It was some guy that had a dream to make an entire universe of some far off galaxy where there's, you know, warring worlds and shit and 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 just have it be that like make make it about the world building. Yeah, I agree. Fucking a. Amen. God damn. And I volunteered Game Rage Magazine as tribute to, to do this, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, this venture. So, Disney, if you're listening, holler if you hear me. Anyways, you got anything else? Uh, I don't think so, but I'm still dicey on whether I would want the Force involved or not. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think maybe we just kind of, maybe we go away from it. Maybe we, just, maybe we just don't worry about it for three movies and, like, let it resettle, let it rekindle itself. And then we bring the force back for the next trilogy. Because you know they're going to make these trilogies until the end of goddamn time. Like, yeah. This is, it's going to keep happening. Yeah. So maybe we maybe we give the force a break. It, it's been the main focal point of nine fucking movies. Maybe we give it a rest. We say, hey, force, and relax, guy. You need a rest. Just take a break, guy. And we, we take it off for three movies. Do like a sweet fucking like kind of action war movie type vibe. Politics, whatever. And then fucking, you know... Maybe bring the force, introduce the force at the end of that. Maybe Darth Maul comes back. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe maybe you go back to the well again. I don't know. And you, you bring back some of the characters that we we love that aren't dead that anybody can play. So, anyways, <laughs> all right. Well, fuck. I guess that will do it for us. If you want to uh, go do a solid, go to Game Rage Magazine on YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Game Rage Magazine, Twitter slash X Game Rage Mag. You can follow Adam at All Gas No Trash Official on Instagram, and you can follow Frank at Anime underscore Syndicate underscore Podcast. That'll do it for us. We'll catch you guys on the next one. And you guys just remember that Game Rage Magazine is going to be making the next Star Wars trilogy. So uh, fucking count on it. That was the Game Rage Star Wars podcast. Don't forget, like and subscribe on Instagram and TikTok at 
Game Rage Magazine. Also on Twitter slash X at Game Rage Mag. In addition to the actual website of www.gameragemagazine.com. Check it out for a host of all of our other podcasts and everything else that we do to be determined later. Thanks for listening.